It's interesting because in the Lord's Prayer, it's really a collection of requests. We're asking God to do several things. We're asking him to forgive our sins, to provide for our needs, to keep us from temptation and all of this. But the very first thing we ask is that his name would be hallowed or be made holy. It's significant that this is the first request we make of God in prayer because all of these other petitions, all of these other requests, they come out of this one. We want God's name to be made holy in and through our lives, and so we need his forgiveness. We want God's name to be made holy, and so we need him to keep us from temptation. We want God's name to be made holy, and so we need him to provide for our needs. Everything comes back to the need to make God's name holy. This idea of making the name of God holy tells us something important about this prayer and about the nature of prayer in general. See, when we pray, we're not just trying to get God to do something about our problems. This is not a to-do list for God. The truth is bigger and better than that. In prayer, we are meeting with God. Prayer is a conversation, and conversations go two ways. And so, yes, we ask God to meet our needs, but we're also encountering him and learning what it is that he wants. This isn't a prayer that's fundamentally about getting things from God. It's about experiencing his fullness in every aspect of life, the way life was always meant to be. There's there's this contemplative prayer manual from the Middle Ages. It's called The Cloud of Unknowing. It was written by an anonymous English mystic. Uh, You can find some pretty good modern translations of it on the internet, or I guess if you can read Middle English, you can read that too. Uh, There's a line in in this prayer in a modern translation that, that came across my path a few weeks ago, and I keep thinking about this. It says, lift up your heart to God with humble love, and mean God himself, not what you get out of him. I'll say that again. Lift up your heart to God with humble love, and mean God himself, not what you get out of him. Surely this is part of what's going on when we pray, hallowed be your name. We don't begin with a desire to get God to do things for us. Instead, we begin with the desire to know and experience God himself so that we can give him glory and love him in the way we were made to love him. And everything else comes out of that first longing. So when we pray, hallowed be your name, we're asking God to be at work in our lives, to teach us to want the things that he wants and to love the things he loves. When we pray these words, what we are seeking is a transformative encounter with God that changes who we are from the inside out. We're asking that his name will be made holy in our world and that this will begin first in our own hearts and our lives. Praying, hallowed be your name, is a vulnerable and a dangerous thing to do in some sense. You shouldn't pray this if your goal is to stay exactly the way that you are. You should not pray this if you're hoping God will stay at a safe distance somewhere over there. You shouldn't pray this if you're hoping to keep on going through the motions of a polite, toothless religion that never challenges you or the world around you. But if you're after something else, if you're after the burning heat of the consuming fire, or the radiant light that drives out the darkness, or the still small voice that speaks comfort and peace to your innermost being, if what you're after is an encounter with the holy God, then this is the way you should pray. Because in praying this prayer, we're inviting God's holiness to come in and mess with our own unholy lives. We're opening ourselves up to his work in our hearts and exposing ourselves to his good and perfect will. We're climbing up on the altar and saying, here we are, do what you will. Teach us to make your name holy in the ways that we live and speak and love and in who we are. And the thing is, Jesus taught us to pray this way because this is how we were meant to live. 